Is the fastest way to die in Tears of the Kingdom getting attacked by the keys in the prologue, or playing through the intro and immediately jumping off a ledge? Or maybe it's something else entirely. Die percent is a pretty common category extension for speedruns since it's short and has a clear objective. Just don't think about the premise of it, speedruns like doing things fast. There's a whole leaderboard for dying in different ways for Breath of the Wild, including things like falling off a cliff, ice water, bees, and... Koga? Leave a comment if you're interested in hearing about that run, it's a pretty fun story. In your first playthrough of Breath of the Wild, you may have put up a pretty respectable time for a glitchless die percent fall off a cliff if you, like many others, were curious what would happen if you got a bit too close to the edge. And falling off a cliff is the fastest way to die in Breath of the Wild, but the glitchless world record is 2 minutes and 21 seconds, where the unrestricted world record is just 59 seconds. The difference is the out-of-bounds clip that's possible immediately after getting the Sheikah Slate. By using the scope while Link is running into this corner with the camera turned backwards, the scope will turn him around such that his model clips out of bounds. This gives us access to a cliff of sorts that doesn't require watching all the long cutscenes. From here, it's not quite high enough to deal 3 hearts of damage, so you need to wait for Link to take cold damage before hitting the ground. This is definitely not lore accurate Link. Maybe he just needs another 100 years. But Tears of the Kingdom starts off a little bit differently. Instead of waking up naked with 3 hearts, you're placed in the tunnels beneath Hyrule Castle with 30 hearts and full stamina, which by the way is more than you can get in Breath of the Wild even with the DLC, equipped with the Champion's Tunic and Master Sword. It's extremely linear, and if you go too far away from Zelda, she'll stop you and talk your ear off about the Zonai and Imprisoning War. The water at the start isn't deep enough for Link to drown, and the ceiling is never high enough to take fall damage, so the options are incredibly limited. The only way to take damage is fighting the keys at the end, which isn't exactly ideal. But the alternative is watching the 4 minute unskippable cutscene that's so long it puts Link to sleep. Which brings me back to the initial question, is it faster to die to the keys, or watch the intro and find the fastest ledge to jump off and die? And I'm sure a lot of people have wondered what happens when you die in the prologue but haven't been bored enough to try it, let alone time it to see how fast it can be done, so I've done the work for you. If you run straight through the intro, making sure to do these little jumps before the dialogue triggers to save a second or two because it makes Zelda run toward you, and get hit by the keys 120 times, it takes just under 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Totally fine. This makes things pretty interesting because an optimal intro takes 6 minutes and 40 seconds to gain control of Link in the Room of Awakening. So to tie things up, we just need to die within 50 seconds. The room Link spawns in doesn't extend high enough to take fall damage, so grabbing the decayed Master Sword and cutting the vines is required. This only leaves 20 seconds left, and looking at our surroundings, it's hard to say what the best option is. The door at the end is closed and only opens after activating the terminal, which already takes around 40 seconds. The water under the gears is deep enough to drown in, but it only deals one heart of damage and has a long animation respawn time. There's one more option, but it requires everyone's favorite trick, cog skip. With a well-timed running jump turnaround jump slash, we can make it to this upper ledge. This isn't high enough to take damage, so we have to keep climbing. It turns out, it's possible to take 3 hearts of fall damage if you climb up this route, wait for Link's stamina to refill, and then do 4 jumps before meeting a timely demise. This just barely works, any lower and it only deals 2 and 3 quarter hearts of damage. But even after all of that, the final time was just over 7 minutes and 30 seconds. And while both attempts were improvable, the difference between them would stay roughly the same, so it's slightly faster to let the keys kill Link. But there's an even faster way to die, and it's reminiscent of Breath of the Wild. Even without the Sheikah Slate, there's a way to clip out of bounds in the intro by climb jumping at a very specific spot on the wall. This unfortunately only works on version 1.0, so if you're a current patch purist, then good luck with the bats. Once we're out of bounds, we can see that there's really nothing to see. 
the intro area is separate from the overworld, just like shrines are, which is why it's unlikely we'll ever be able to skip the intro cutscene and speedruns. But being out of bounds does give us the ability to take damage. Voiding out doesn't work, but by jumping off the edge and immediately diving while holding backwards, we can take one heart of damage. Repeat that 29 more times and GG, the fastest game over in just under 2 minutes. And because I've been watching too much timber, I figured I'd try some black magic to die even faster. Generally, speedruns are required to start from a fresh boot of the game, which means that any glitches that transfer through saves are banned. But for fun, I wanted to try messing around with the setup file. One of the fastest ways to die that I've come across is throwing a gem and getting caught in the explosion. Trust me, it's happened way too many times. And with the existence of glitches that transfer items between saves, I should be able to transfer a gem to Link in the intro. The item transfer glitch I decided to use is called Zuggle Load Object Transfer. The slot works by fuse entangling an object to a shield so that it's in a state where the game registers the object as being fused to the shield while also staying interactable in-game. Then, you use Zuggle, which sticks the shield to Link so that it lasts through loads. After reloading, the shield will be there, and the fuse entangled object will remain loaded in the world at the coordinates we left it at. The prologue area isn't located in the overworld, but since all the different maps in the game share the same coordinate system, we just need to slot the item at the coordinates that correspond to the starting area of the prologue which according to the object map is 64, 35, 191, or right around here. After trying it out, I managed to get a topaz on top of the tunnel, right above Link's head, instead of inside the tunnel. That's because the Z coordinate that I read from the object map is pretty far off, and it's actually spawning way up here and then falling down. I tried clipping through the floor and slotting from the water below, but it still wasn't low enough, so it looks like the overworld isn't the best option, since I don't think I'll be able to easily get below the water plane at the right height for what I'm trying to do. So I went into the object map again, filtered the search to shrines, and looked around for any objects that were close to where the start of the prologue is. And it turns out, this group of four big wheels in Marakuguk is basically perfect. It's a little low and not exactly the same spot, but by putting this ramp on the end of the car and moving the car slightly, it lines up. The topaz doesn't actually kill Link in one hit, so I slotted two in by dropping my first fuse entangled shield before fuse entangling and zuggling the second one, and then unequipping my shield so that I could pick up the dropped topaz shield and zuggle that one as well. With all the setup complete, I return to the title screen to select new game, say thank you for the care package, throw the topazes, and boom. Link is done with Tears of the Kingdom in under 50 seconds. It makes me wonder what Zelda was thinking watching me record everything, uh, but she's probably used to it by this point. Anyway, this was silly and pretty fun, so if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe.